joining us at home this morning. We're starting on page 355 of your book of common prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires know, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I anointed you king over Israel, and 
thy liberty to us and to the soul. And I gave thee your master's house, and your master's wives and children. I gave you the house of Israel and of Israel. And if this was you before, I would act to you as not before. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have smitten Uriah and his house with a sword, and have taken his wife to be your wife, and have slain him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah and his house to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of his son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And David said to David, the Lord also has put away your sin, you shall not die. The word of the Lord. Psalm 20 for today is found in the insert, Psalm 51, verses 1 to 13. And this 
yes, burn it so much as possible. The prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers, or the equipment of the saints, or the work of ministry, or building up the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of God, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the coming of men, by their craftiness and deceitful wiles. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way to him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every joint with which it is supplied, when each part of the earth is proper, with its bodily growth, and fulfills itself in love. The word of the Lord. to St. John. So when the people saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him has God the Father set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? 
Our fathers ate the man in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It's very good to see you all this morning on this rainy Sunday. I told this, I'll give you the same promise that I made to the 730 crew that I will not preach both sermons. Since I wasn't here last week, I was on vacation. I will not preach both sermons this morning, but restrict myself to just one. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Last week we read about how David fell into the same trap powerful people fall into all the time. They let their covetousness, their envy, their greed be empowered by the power they had and did what he wanted. In the intervening verses, Joab follows David's orders. Uriah finds himself in the most dangerous part of the battle and is killed. We hear about how Joab and David send secret messages to each other to acknowledge this fact. And this morning we come to the verses. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentations for him. And when the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. We then read how the prophet Nathan is sent to speak with David about this. And it's in David's role as a judge. Now today, we've separated the executive and the judicial powers here in this country. We have a president who's our leader, who's in charge of the armed forces, and we have a Supreme Court that, that is the final say on the law. In David's day, the king was the ruler, the head of the army, and also a one-person Supreme Court. Nathan comes to him with a terrible story. A rich man with a large herd had a special visitor. And rather than take one of the lambs or one of the sheep from his own very extensive flock, he went to his neighbor's house, who was poor, who had one little ewe lamb. And that lamb was like a member of the family. And he took that lamb, and he killed it, and he made it their dinner. And no one was doing anything about it. And David, who was a shepherd, identifies with the poor man. He gets angry. And he says to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing, because he had no pity. And Nathan looks at him and says, You are that man. The Lord God of Israel says, I anointed you king over Israel and rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added so much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? God goes on in these verses, the ones that are just after, and tells David what the consequences of his actions are going to be. This idea that the kings of Judah and Israel have done evil in God's sight is one that we see over and over again in the books of Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles. Usually it has to do with the fact that they continue to allow idol worship to go on in their kingdoms. And here, God is telling David that his abuse of power to cover up his sin is evil in God's sight. Remember a few weeks ago when the Israelites and the Judahites all came to David and said, we want you to be our king, we want you to be a shepherd over us and to lead us? Here the shepherd kills one of the sheep to cover up his abuse of another one. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Our psalm this morning is one that David writes during this time. It's one of repentance. When Saul sins, he kind of shrugs and says, whatever. He continues doing what he's doing. When David sins, he writes a lament. 
This may be the most famous of the seven penitential psalms. Create me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help in me, and sustain me with your godly spirit. But let's read a little further in the psalm, to the portion we're not reading today. David goes on to write, Restore to me the gladness of your salvation, and hold me with a willing spirit. I will teach the wicked your ways, that sinners may return to you. Rescue me from violent bloodshed, God, my saving God, and my tongue will sing joyfully of your justice. Lord, you will open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. For you do not desire a sacrifice, or I give it, a burnt offering you would not accept. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a contrite spirit, a contrite and humbled heart. O oh God, you will not scorn. David's praying, of course, for the removal of the personal and the social disorders that his sin has brought that God has promised. But everybody does that. How many times have you looked at a child or looked at a politician who's been caught? And how many times have you heard the phrase, they're not, guilt they're not feeling guilty for what they did. They're feeling guilty because they're caught. That was Saul. David, though, he wants to go further than that. He wants to change and be holy. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, begged you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Last week we read that Paul reminded his readers of the great love they had been shown in Christ. And this week he reminds them that they must also live into that love. With all humility and gentleness, patience, bearing one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. But why? Why do these Jews and Gentiles need to come together to do this? Because they're one body, one spirit. Just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. We're all part of the same family, thanks to Christ, the same church. We're on the same road together. We've been given grace to live that holy and changed life. And God gives us gifts along the way, people who can help equip us, to mature us, so that we can be built into the body of Christ. No longer driven to and fro by the winds of the world and its divisions. But as Paul writes, speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. We are growing into the body of Christ, with him as its head. In our gospel this morning, or the week after Jesus fed the 5,000 in our readings, and the day after in, in Jesus' time. It's one of the great miracles of the Bible. It's a miracle we often underestimate the importance of. If we had 5,000 people sitting in our parking, in the parking lot this morning we needed to, fill, to feed, what would we do? I'd send Steve to Wegmans, I'd send Jay over to, to Redmond's, and I'd send some other people to Giant and to Walmart, and eventually, with enough resources, we could buy the food. That's the great blessing we have with things like refrigeration and canning and preservatives. But in those days, if there's 5,000 people and 12 fishes and some loaves, what's going to happen? Or 12 loaves and some fishes, what's going to happen? There's going to be some awfully hungry people here. And Jesus here does what he always does. When the crowd gets too big and he's not able to pray, Jesus and the disciples jump in the boat and they cross the lake. And as soon as the people realize what happened, they start to cross the lake and look for him. Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because of the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Lesson number one in youth ministry is simple. If you want to get a crowd of teenagers together, simply go out and advertise that you're having free pizza. Teenagers will come. And the crowd had been fed, and that was a big deal, just like it would have been today. But that's not why Jesus came. Not to simply the physical needs of people. 
Although that's important. Let me say it again, that's very important. If we pretend that we don't have to do those things, and we're just going to spiritually feed people, we're not doing the will of God. But Jesus came to fill the spiritual hunger we had inside of us. They wanted manna from heaven like Moses gave to them for those 40 years in the desert. But Jesus promised the bread of God, which has come down from heaven and gives life to the world. And of course, they said, Sir, give us this bread always. And the beauty is, Jesus answered their request. He said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now I know that many of you have already jumped ahead in your minds to words we speak almost every week. Where Jesus, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This to you as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus says this to the crowd that's assembled about a year or so into his ministry. We still have two years to go in the book of John before we get to that night in the upper room. I want to quote a bishop uh, who I read a few years ago, what he had to say about this. He said, Jesus' self-giving and acting communion is not only concerned with the Last Supper, the cross and the empty tomb alone. The tomb alone. Jesus' whole life, rather than one or two events, will institute the sacrament of communion. To put it differently, faith is not in Jesus' death and resurrection alone, but in Jesus' whole life, from Bethlehem to Golgotha, and beyond to the empty tomb and garden, his appearance to his disciples, and his ascension into heaven. We have to look at the whole life of Jesus to understand. We cannot cherry pick the portions we like and ignore the parts that we don't. And we have to allow our whole life to mirror his. We cannot just hear the word. We have to hear it and then go out and live it. The good shepherd is in this passage trying to take care of the sheep. Jesus wanted those who had been filled up with Christian bread the day before to know that they could be as spiritually full as they had just been physically full. Part of that is to the Eucharist. The other part is through prayer, Bible study, and sharing God's love with others. May we continue to grow into the body of Christ we are called to be. Amen. You'll stand with me. Let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. believe in one God, my Father the Almighty, and maker of heaven and earth, for all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, the life of the Lord, who is God and true God, who God did not name, what we need of our Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, the kingdom of God in heaven. Our power of the Holy Spirit, we became a part of the Virgin Mary, and we're saying that our God saved us with three plus nine from the Hans of Thailand. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and we see it in our right hand of the Father. And we're coming again, Lord, and we shall have so many today, that we can see them on the other hand. We do lean on the Holy Spirit. The Lord will give up life, which proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son in His worship for our life. It is from the Father. We believe in one and one half and half of the Church. We do not know about the baptism of the two existences. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord of God.
promise to hear the petitions of those who ask in your son's name. We beseech you mercifully to incline your ear to us, who have now made our prayers and supplications to you, and grant that those things which we have faithfully asked according to your will may effectually be obtained to the relief of our necessity, and to the setting forth of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and brought our prayer to you, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our own heart, we have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and humble to repent, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ.
hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You've made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> supper he took a cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith christ has died christ is risen Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace that the last day bring us with all your sins into the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask to your son jesus christ by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever Amen. and now as our savior christ has taught us we are bold to say our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us the same our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be peace. Amen. Take away the sin.
feeding us spiritual food, the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, the Holy Spirit, for the honor and glory, now and in prayer. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. A couple of quick announcements this morning. First off, I do, I do not believe we have any birthdays this week, but I may be wrong. Do we have any birthdays? We're back to doing birthdays again. This is, this is your warning. <laughs> Gene has made the, has made the uh, birthday jar reappear after its long absence, so we'll be checking in every week for that. Um, following the service this morning, we will have set up in the vestry room the camera, because we'd love to hear your stories of St. Paul's and Old Union from long ago and from just recently. They can be serious, they can be funny, uh, they can be anywhere in between. But we look forward to hearing some of those and then everyone being able to see them as part of our 150th and 190th anniversary celebrations next year. Am I missing any announcements? Will they be seeing and hearing them or just hearing them? Hopefully seeing and hearing, but a few people do not want to be on camera, so we'll be recording them and then putting pictures of them over it. We, we may cut out the, the, the mouths so that they move like they used to in some of the cartoons when I was a kid, or maybe not, I, I don't know. Um, but we, we do want to hear the story, because I hear wonderful stories from people about what has happened in the past and things their, their parents and grandparents did, the stories they were told, and we just like to hear those from you all. Uh, instead of, you know, in written form, which is great, it doesn't have the same um, impact, I don't think, as actually hearing from you. So uh, please, uh, line, line up there after the service, and we'd be happy to record you. Any other announcements? Old Union. Old Union. Thank you, Joyce. Our, our 930 service next week is at Old Union. Believe it or not, it will already have been, the set will already be the second week of August, next week on the 8th. So we will be there. Thank you for reminding me.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. 